Welcome to Ride Connections Lunch in Motion. We're so excited to come together in this way to celebrate the mission of this amazing organization, to look back at the challenges we've overcome, and to share our vision of the future, and of course, to raise every dollar we can towards providing rides to the folks who need them most. A ride, whether to a doctor's appointment, a grandchild's birthday, or even a celebratory lunch with friends and neighbors may seem like a small thing, but it can mean the difference between isolation and connection. Connection to essential healthcare, to the company of loved ones, and to the joy of being out in the world among other people. So grab a sandwich and buckle in. Let's do lunch. Recently, we sat down with Julie Wilkie Pilmer, Ride Connection CEO, for her perspective on the organization's growth through these extraordinary times and the continuation of its mission going forward. I do believe that it is the basic right for everybody to have independent mobility. That's where Right Connection comes in and is able to really support our community members. Independent mobility means different things to different people. Right Connection is built on this culture of collaboration. And I think when we talk about meeting people where they're at, we're respecting that individual for who they are, recognizing that we all have strengths and we all have varying abilities. And if we are really truly engaging in that individual, um, then we are truly meeting them where they are at. Whether that means needing some assistance on getting groceries from the grocery cart into a vehicle and into your home, learning how to ride the public bus system, or being a part of a group that goes to the grocery store on a regular basis and you have that connection on the bus and that supports you living independently because you have this connection with others. If I think back to, you know, what being independently mobile meant to my dad, for instance, I think that changes on a daily basis and some days people need a little additional assistance. As it became clear the pandemic was going to change our lives significantly, as people were concerned about going out in the community, we had to kind of reevaluate what independent mobility and supporting individuals living on their own looked like. We needed to think outside our space and really think about unmet needs in a bit of a different way getting services to individuals instead of taking individuals to services. What we're also seeing um, as we're coming out of the pandemic is so much unmet need, new needs within our communities. As we're really getting out into the community and having those one-on-one -on -one conversations, we're seeing that we may need to shift in types of services and um, types of programs that we're offering it's also a hope for the future too, right? We have to be able to evolve and grow as our community evolves and grows. Um, and I think that we're, we're positioned to do that. Um, just, and it's because of our mission, it's because of who we serve, how we serve, it's you know our staff and our volunteers and our donor support, all of that. Thank you, Julie. Next, we'd like to welcome Sam DeSue Jr. TriMet's general manager, who has kindly offered the following remarks. Hello, I'm Sam DeSue Jr., general manager at TriMet. I'm honored to join you today representing the region's largest public transportation provider and longtime partner of Ride Connection. I appreciate the opportunity to share a few words about the positive impacts and important services Ride Connection provides our community. While we all hope we could gather to celebrate in person, we come together in spirit, safely champion this important cause. We are here today to show our support for Ride Connection and applaud the employees and volunteers who show up every day to make this organization a success. We also celebrate the work of strong Ride Connection leadership who continue to shape and direct these critical transit services. Specifically, I want to recognize CEO Julie Wilkie Pilmer for her commitment and enthusiasm for this work. She was recently named one of Portland Business Journal's Executives of the Year. This award comes as no surprise to any of us 
who have the opportunity to work with Julie. We know firsthand of her leadership and dedication to employees, volunteers, and customers alike. Working through this pandemic has been a challenge, and you have led with grit and grace. Bravo to you. The strength of Ride Connection is its people. All of you who work to ensure mobility, accessibility, independence, and community connections for some of our most vulnerable among us. Thanks to your shared commitment, you have helped establish and grow this organization into one of the largest nonprofit providers of accessible transportation in the country. At TriMet, we appreciate the work you do. We rely on the strong and long-standing partnership with Ride Connection to extend transit connections within the region, building an inclusive and innovative transportation network. By offering one-on-one -on -one travel training, you help people maintain independence and open up access to TriMet's buses and trains. Your Community Connector Shuttle Services extends transit into the rural areas, and your door-to-door -door trips for those with greater mobility support needs extend services to those with limited transit options and rounds out the complete transit picture. Since 1986, Ride Connection has focused on the customer and has worked in collaboration with other nonprofit organizations to encourage full engagement of transit as a whole. For nearly 36 years, TriMet and Ride Connection have come together to meet the needs of our community. We continue to connect the historically underserved to economic opportunities. We encourage healthy communities and we actively work to remove transportation barriers and mobility challenges. The need for more transit and greater mobility options throughout our region is growing. TriMet will continue to support and rely upon Ride Connection to help meet our regional needs. Thank you, thank you for what you do for our community and for the opportunity to recognize your work within our region. TriMet is thankful for our long-standing partnership and we are hopeful and encouraged for the future. In parts, thanks to the good that you do every single day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sam. We truly appreciate your participation in our event today and, of course, TriMet's continuing partnership. Next, it is our privilege to share Andrew's story with you. We need to be able to get out of the house. You know, we need to be able to go places and we need, and we need to be able to go some places at least when we want to go, you know, and not be beholden to anybody. My name is Andrew Pham. I was fully sighted seven years ago, uh, but lost my sight. And from the Oregon Commission for the Blind, I was referred over to Ride Connection. Independence is something that I think a lot of people take for granted. Not being able to do, to go where you need to go, it's, it's having to be fully dependent upon other people to do things. It, it's hard, it hurts, it makes me feel sad. Hi, my name is Simon. I'm a travel trainer with uh, the RideWise travel training program through Ride Connection. We just do a really a good, thorough job and the people here care about what they're doing. I vaguely remember going to his house and doing the interview because that's, you know, what we do is we, we, we usually meet people in their houses to, um, to do the interviews and I knew that I was going to have to be very thorough and it was going to have to be really, you know, um, different. It will be more of a challenge to, to sort of make sure that the route's practical, safe for Andrew to actually do. Oftentimes the closest bus stop is not the safest bus stop. We almost figured it out together, you know, and it was a lot easier because we do get on well. You know, having Mr. Simon, it's like I have someone that can assist me in just planning my, helping me customize that route customize that training to, to whatever location that I want to go to. You know, I've trained with him for such a long time now that, you know, he's not just my travel trainer, but I do see him as a friend. Ride Connection, they have trained me and helped me to go and do things by myself, go and accomplish things that other people think that I can't even do. And, you know, my family is amazed at my ability to go out by myself and go to the store if I need to, you know, go to a doctor's appointment, go to my daughter's school to pick her up if that's the case. It gives me independence. It gives me the ability 
to take care of the things that I need to take care of and go to the places I need to go every day. It was one day where he told me that, um, you know, he just, he'd never felt as good crossing. We were crossing Foster at 80 seconds, so it seemed like it was a, a pretty good day for Andrew. And so, you know, it was a good day for me too because, you know, I care about him. If I didn't have Ride Connection and the Rise Wide program, I would be sitting at home, afraid to leave my house, afraid to go anywhere by myself. I wouldn't be able to go to the park. I wouldn't be able to go to the store. I would always be fully dependent upon someone to take me and walk me in and take me around. Um, I wouldn't have the confidence that I have now. And I wouldn't have that joy of being able to just go and do things independently. As a person with a disability, you know, travel training gives me that independence one trip at a time. We'd like to thank Andrew for his generosity in sharing his time and his experience with us, and Simon for the wonderful work he does every day. And now, we'd like to invite you to show your support for Ride Connection by going to www.rideconnection.org slash LIM slash give and making a gift which is meaningful to you. The contributions made through this event will provide free, accessible, reliable transportation options to individuals in Clackamas, Multnomah, and Washington counties enabling us to continue helping people like Andrew retain their independent mobility and get where they need to go. Please consider making a gift today. Now we are excited to present our keynote speaker, Kelly Johnston. Kelly holds a master's in science of organizational development with coursework combined from both MBA and graduate psychology programs. She is an educator, leadership developer, and the mayor of her community in Washington state. Hi, my name is Kelly Smith Johnston, and I'm so pleased to be here today and share the message of Science of Hope with you, and also support a great organization like Ride Connection. As you'll see, Ride Connection is a hope building organization. So when we talk about the science of hope, it fits so nicely into the mission and vision that Ride Connection lives out every day. I'm here talking with you as a consultant I work primarily in state and local governments and also with nonprofits. Uh, that's where my heart is, and I enjoy working with organizations to help them be more effective. So my degree is a combined degree in MBA courses, what makes organizations work, and also in psychology courses, what makes people tick. But in addition to that, and perhaps more importantly, I started my career in transit. I was a proud public servant working for a local transit agency, and it happened to be during the Great Recession. And I spent many, many hours through difficult public hearings because one of the things that we had to do at that time was resize our service based on our tax revenues. Those were difficult conversations, difficult things to listen to. But what I took from it is how critically important transportation is to the health and well being of individuals and a whole community. And now today I serve as mayor of my own town of about 18,000 people. And I'm constantly reminded of how vital transportation services are. So the work that Ride Connection does, I have deep appreciation for. I know that you may be here listening as a donor. You may be a client or a customer of Ride Connection. You may be a community partner, supporter, or an employee, or several of those roles. This message is for you. This is a message of appreciation, hopefully of inspiration after some very difficult years that we've all experienced. Um, but I hope that you will find this very valuable. The Science of Hope is a theory of research that goes back about 30 years. It moves out of social sciences, um, but it hasn't reached a tipping point in our pop culture, so to speak. There have been over 2,000 different empirical studies 
and they've been taking place over those 30 years. Some of them are longitudinal studies, some of them are short term, but all of them are pointing towards how critical this concept is in encouraging people to live the life that they want. So let's start with what does it mean to flourish? If I ask that question, what words come to mind for you? For most people, it's things like growth, learning, success, whether that's in the personal domain or the professional domain, and success can mean a lot of different things. But it's something about living our best life. And when we ask people what they want out of life, they all say something similar. They use different words, but they're pointing to that pursuit of happiness. We want that opportunity to live up to our potential, to be who we think we were meant to be. And if we want people to flourish, then what we know is that a sense of hope rising is the number one predictor of whether people will flourish in life. When people have a sense of hope rising, they're able to move toward that future that they've envisioned for themselves and to live it out fully and experience the satisfaction and joy that comes from that. So what do we mean by a sense of hope rising? Well, there is a theory that goes with this and high hope people believe four things. The first thing that they believe is that the future will be better than the present. That has been a belief that has been challenging for a lot of people over the last few years as we've experienced a lot of difficult things. But high hope people believe that that future will be better and the present doesn't have to be bad to have that belief. For some people, the present is full of challenges and they believe that it will get better. For other people, the present is pretty good, but there's still that belief that things will improve even more over time. But along with that is a sense of what I call agency. When we talk about the future being better than the present, that doesn't happen by magic. What happens is high hope people believe that they have the power to make it so. They're the authors of their own lives. They have that reservoir of self-determination that moves them forward toward that vision and goal in the future. The third thing they believe is that there's many paths to get there. And I love this one because it fits so well with Ride Connection. There's always more than one way to get somewhere. And if we can't get there with the original plan, we're gonna find an alternative plan. That is a key element of hope. But people with rising hope, hope building capability, are also incredibly pragmatic. They know that no path is free from obstacles. They are willing to re-goal, set a new goal for themselves, or they're willing to find a different path in the face of obstacles. Not only are they willing to do that, but they're capable of doing that. So when we talk about rising hope, what we're talking about is building hope capability in individuals. And I think about Ride Connection, serving more than 2,000 individuals a year, offering 500,000 rides. What that is doing at an individual level is it's giving individuals the power to make it so. It's giving individuals the ability to be the authors of their own life, to be able to move from point A to point B, to get to those places that have meaning for them and to begin to flourish in life. An element of hope is having a goal. High hope people set more goals, they set harder goals, they reach more goals more often and sooner. Part of this is because we can see that the future is going to be better and we can have a goal around that. But the other part of it is that we need the ability to get there and we need to have the a determination to make that happen. So Ride Connection creates those pathways and gives people the ability to have that agency in their own life and to build hope capability. This doesn't just happen at an individual level. It also happens at a collective level. We can talk about individual hope and we can talk about collective hope. Collective hope mimics individual hope, but at a communal level, whether that's a team, an organization, or a whole community like Ride Connection serves. When there's collective hope, there is a belief 
that the community can achieve its goals. They have shared goals, they have the ability to identify pathways and find resources, and they have that reservoir of determination to move there. And this is where I have my experience as mayor looking at my own community, and I can feel the difference when there's a shared goal that people are trying to create. And in my community, it's often about helping others, but they also have to believe that collectively we can make that happen. And when an organization shows up and says, hey, look, we can manage the transportation side of things, that frees up all of this capacity for other organizations to say, great, then we'll make sure the services are in place, or we'll go build the jobs for people, or we'll create good, healthy schools for the families as they get their kids to school. All of that is creating a sense of belief that the community can achieve its goals. So Ride Connections not only creating hope at an individual level, but it's also building hope capability in the entire community. Now the hope message for me over the last few years has changed. When I first began delivering it, I had a lot of people nodding their heads and seeing themselves in these descriptions. But as uh, we've experienced a pandemic and other very difficult things, I see a lot more hesitation or concern or just disbelief that things can be better. So I wanna talk for a moment about the difference between resiliency and hope. Sometimes these two items get conflated and they are different. Resiliency is the ability to bounce back after a difficult experience and to be strong or as strong or stronger in the face of adversity. So resiliency is keeping going, right? Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. But hope, hope something different. Hope is the capability to create a life that has less adversity. We need both in ourselves and in our community. We need that ability to stay strong in the face of adversity because adversity is coming. But we also need the ability to create a life, to create a community, a world that has less adversity for ourselves and others. When we come out of these difficult things, we need to not only draw on that resiliency, that grit, but we also need to create hope capability so that ourselves can live a life with less adversity, but the people around us can as well. This is another place where Ride Connection provides instrumental support. Instrumental means tangible, meaningful support to people who are trying to create a life for themselves with less adversity. That is a hope building capability. Now, many of you have heard of post-traumatic stress disorder, and I'm glad. I think it's reached enough of the population that people are aware of this condition and understand that it needs vital support. But very few people have heard of post-traumatic growth. Post-traumatic growth is actually the majority's response to trauma. For many people, trauma creates PTSD. And that's something that needs to be supported and navigated. However, what we don't realize is that for the majority of people, a traumatic experience leads to a sense of growth. It builds a sense of strength and resilience and a hope capability in people. What we mean by post-traumatic growth is that whatever your baseline was when you started, that traumatic experience will drop you below baseline but the growth will bring you back higher than when you began. I mention this because as we come out of COVID, and I know that it's still very real for people, it still constrains a lot of people's lives, but there is this sense of moving back towards gathering and being in public and working together in physical spaces. As we come forward, I really encourage you to think about the growth opportunities that are there. What can we take from those difficult times and move forward in a sense of being filled with purpose and having greater capability to live the lives that we want? I'm gonna conclude by saying hope matters. This is the number one predictor of whether or not we flourish in life. Multiple, multiple research will support that. It's also a choice. 
It's something that we can choose to do day in and day out. Remember that High Hope people believe the future will be better than the present. Nurture that belief in yourself and others. People with a sense of rising hope know that they have the power to make it so. Recognize that you're the author of your own life and encourage others to see where they have the power to shape their future. Hope can be learned and because it can be learned, it can be shared with others. So as we conclude today, I encourage you to go share that message of hope with others. Help them envision the future that's better than the present. Help them be the author of their own lives and know that when you contribute financially, with time, with support, your talent to Ride Connection, you are building hope capability in individuals and in your community. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kelly. Now, before we finish our program, we'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors. Thank you to our gold sponsors, Care Oregon and TriMet. Thank you to our silver sponsors, Cambia Health Foundation, Columbia Bank, Kaiser Permanente, and On Point Community Credit Union. Thank you to our bronze sponsors, Buckalter, Full Path Transit Technology, Heffernan Insurance Brokers, Gresham Ford, Moda Health, Pacific West Bank, Pacific Source Health Plans, Providence Health and Services, Shetke Bus and Van Sales. Once again, the address to give is www.rideconnection.org slash LIM slash give. Thank you once again to all of our speakers and participants, and thank you for joining us and for your support of our mission and the customers we serve.